Welcome back to the wood shop. This is part two of a two-part series on building this dust shroud for the miter saw. I included a link to part one in the description. I'm going to show you how I finished building this dust shroud for the miter saw, but first I have a question for you. Has anyone besides me been shocked by their electric bill last month? Holy smokes! Ours has never been so high. Literally never. If you stick around to the end of the video, I'm going to tell you how you can save money on your electric bill for months and months and years and years, and I'm also going to provide you with a valuable promo code. So stick around. Now back to dust collection for the miter saw. I begin by mounting some cardboard in place around the saw so I could mark and cut out a cardboard template that I could then trace onto the dry erase board before cutting it with a jigsaw. I noticed as I was working with this dry erase board that it must have a static electric charge because the dust was very stubbornly clinging to it and didn't wipe off very easily. It took a few tries to get the shape of the cutout just right. Next I needed to fill the space between the wall and the whiteboard panels. I did this by cutting plywood strips for the top and hardboard strips for the sides. Already putting the dry erase board to work to record my measurements. This is going to come in so handy. Pocket holes make quick sturdy work of attaching this plywood to the wall. Anytime your hands are going to come into contact with a square edge of wood, you want to make sure that you're breaking that corner edge with sandpaper. Otherwise you run the risk of cutting yourself on that sharp edge. Sanding also prevents the edge from splintering. To join the front and side panels together, I use a strip of hardwood with grooves or dados cut in part way to receive the panel edges. Here I'm finding the center of this board so I could rip it in half. Safety first. You may have noticed that I have this little remote that turns on the shop back hanging from the ceiling by a wire. 
which is tied to a magnet. All the drywall screws in the ceiling are still exposed, so I can hang the vacuum remote from the ceiling anywhere in the shop and turn on my dust collector remotely. Here I'm setting the blade to about a quarter inch in height to cut a dado into a test piece. The blade is about an eighth of an inch thick, so it'll take about two passes to get the correct width for a quarter inch panel thickness. That's just the fit we're looking for, a friction fit. Go to accessmore.com. We asked what the greatest commandment was. This is what you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. It's never been about performance or acts of kindness. It's about becoming loving people so that his love may be complete in us. That's Matthew 22, 37. I'm Alex Metroverse of the Day and Positive Energy Kingdom. These boards have a bit of a bow to them, so I'm using a feather board to keep the board tight up against the fence while I make this dado cut. Okay, now I'm getting ready to cut this small part down to size. I've already made some grooves in it so it fits other parts, but I only need it to be this long, which is just a little over an inch. Combination blades, is, which is what this is, have um, teeth going in three different directions. One uh, that's angled a little bit to the left, one that's angled a little bit to the right, and another one that's straight on and they are slightly different in um, left to right so you want to to be as precise as possible you want we're cutting on this line obviously the x means this is the waist side of the piece um, so you want your tooth that is angled this way to be on the line if that makes sense. So here's what I'm talking about. This this tooth right here is the one that's angled just a little bit this way. So the point is further out to this side of the blade and that's the side that's going to cut obviously furthest to this side. So we want to line that up with our line You see that? And then I'm going to hold my piece there while I draw it back and turn the saw on. 
but I gotta move the camera before I do that, otherwise I'll shake everything. Uh-oh. I should have been ready with a push stick or a piece of wood just in case. Okay, so I've cut the whiteboard panels to size and shape and I've installed this piece here to take up the space between the wall and the box and the panel. And then I also needed to fill in this gap along the side here. Uh, so what I decided to do with that is you saw me cutting grooves in, uh, this is a piece of maple. So I cut a groove to receive the panel, uh, the white panel, and also this side panel. So that'll just go in here. It's not super snug, but it's not super sloppy either. And that'll fill up the space right there. And get this panel in place. There we go. And initially I cut this piece um, so that it would fit underneath this top piece here. And then as I was looking at it, it looked a little unfinished with this bit of uh, whiteboard sticking up. So I had some off cuts from, from this, uh, continued the grooves in those, and uh, just to give it a more finished look, I'm going to glue those together so that it goes all the way up. And then we'll be pretty close to done. Okay, now here's a situation that isn't going to clamp very well and you can't put pins or brad nails into it very easily either so I'm gonna go with the old yellow glue and CA glue or super glue method um, I'm gonna put some on each side and then the activator on the other side and that'll give me a instant bond I got it taped up so everything's lined up right this is the first time I've used this bottle of activator and there we go Okay, that's probably permanent now. Let me do this other one. I use this, um, it's a healing cutting mat, self-healing cutting mat. Um, glue doesn't stick to it very easily and I don't have a finish on my countertop yet so I don't really want to get a bunch of glue stains on it before I have a chance to put finish on. And I prefer to wear gloves when I'm working with CA glue because it bonds skin really well. That's what they use in the emergency room for small skin openings. So I don't want to stick my fingers together just today.
Okay, so I should be able to take the tape off. And of course the yellow glue hasn't cured yet, but when it does, that'll make an even stronger bond. CA glue can be kind of brittle. Uh-oh, did I bond my tape? No, not too bad. Yeah, I think we did pretty well. Feels pretty solid. All right, then I'm gonna get those, uh, I'm gonna put a round over on this outside corner, over on the router table, and I'm gonna ease these edges and give everything a good sanding. Now I think I'm gonna put some poly finish on it. Um, why not? The blade is spinning counterclockwise, or from left to right, as I'm looking at it. For safety, and to avoid tear out, you need to feed the workpiece against the spin of the blade, not with it. That being said, once the initial cut has been made, then it's safe to feed back in the opposite direction to clean up the cuts. Never feed the workpiece between the blade and the fence because the blade will grab the board and send it across the room. Ask me how I know. I always put the amount of finish I'm going to use into a separate container to avoid contaminating the main supply. I'm using a wipe-on polyurethane. I applied two coats and sanded with 220 grit sandpaper between coats. Here I'm drilling a pilot hole into the top plate so I know exactly where to drill the hole for the rare earth magnets that will help keep these panels in place. To make these holes, I'm using a half inch Forstner bit. Initially I was going to use this dry erase paint from Rust-Oleum that we got from my wife's cousin who works at Rust-Oleum uh, as a free sample. It's two parts that you mix together, part A and part B, and you can paint it on any flat surface. So my plan was to go get some, um, some hardboard like I have on the countertops and paint on the, the whiteboard paint that I have. And when I got to Menards, I noticed that they have whiteboard or dry erase panels already made. They come in two feet by four feet sections, and this is a four foot opening, so two panels is perfect. And they're for $10 each. What a time saver. I actually got this dry erase panel idea from another YouTuber whose name I can't remember right now. I actually did go and search to see if I could find, there were actually a, two, a couple videos that had the dry erase panels on the front of their miter saw and I just thought it was a great idea for making cut lists or um, fun drawings or whatever I want to use it for. Underneath the saw it has its own dedicated shop vac. One of the few purchases I made for this project was the automatic vacuum switch that I got for about $36 on Amazon which is about $18 cheaper than the iVac brand that I see a lot of people using. This shop vac is a little bit underpowered for this setup and I think the main limiting factor is probably the smaller diameter. I use two inch PVC and the shop vac has an opening that's 
just over two inches. So if I had a dust collector with a larger diameter, like four inches, I think this would work even better. And I made a simple door out of a scrap piece of 3 8 inch plywood with some cheap hinges and a wooden dowel to keep it closed. This helps contain some of the noise from the shop vac. Now that you've seen how it was built, you're probably wondering, how does it work? Well, I'm gonna see if I can capture that for you on video. So was this worth building? Would I do it again? I'm gonna say yes. It does definitely contain more of the dust. Um, the dust vac doesn't suck up all of the dust and some of it still does come back out at me with the turbulence of the saw blade spinning, um, but it's a definite improvement over not having anything or just having the shop vac hooked up to the stock port on the back. That didn't do anything as you saw in the previous video. The dust collection is better. I also met my other goal of shrinking my scrap pile by quite a bit. Now I want to switch gears a bit and talk about a great customer experience I had just a couple weeks ago. Uh, now that I'm shooting video in my shop, I noticed there are some dark areas in my shop that needed more light. So I bought the lights that I have, these LED strips from a company called American Green Lights uh, three years ago when I was building my shop. And when I got the new lights, I was repositioning some of, one of the old lights and I heard a pop and the light went dark. So I sent an email to uh, American Green Lights asking them for a replacement. And within an hour or two, I was back in my shop and I got a phone call from Jim at American Green Lights. And this is on a Sunday, no less. And Jim walked me through the uh, troubleshooting process to determine is it the driver, is it the light strip. We did some testing and trying different things and determined that it was actually the driver that had stopped working and not the light strip itself. So he said that he'd put a driver in the in the mail for me. Now that's, that's customer service. So I've got six 24 watt LED strips in here. That's six times 24, 100 and 44, am I doing that right? 144 watts. Compare that to two 75 watt incandescent bulbs would be 150 watts. That wouldn't be nearly the amount of light. Imagine two 75 watt bulbs in this entire shop. Not enough. But with these LED strips, I can get a lot more light with a lot less power and save money every month on my electric bill. So a big shout out to Jim at American Green Lights and as a thank you to them and as a thank you to you, my viewers, American Green Lights was gracious enough to offer a 10% discount on their lights if you use the promo code BRETT, that's B-R-E-T-T, -T, at checkout. So if you need an upgrade for your shop or just additional lighting, they have everything from industrial down to residential. Um, you can save a ton of money with LED strips over your old fluorescent or incandescent lights. They pay for themselves in less than a year, according to their website, and I believe it. Enter promo code BRETT at checkout to get a 10% discount on your lights from AmericanGreenLights.com. Until next time, my friends, be safe and love each other. It looks like a big ear. What? I said it looks like a big ear. <laughs>